Welcome, Avenger. Your presence honors me. Hey everybody, Darmonkey here, back with another Diablo 2 Resurrected video. Today I want to walk through farming keys on a cold sorceress. You might think that a cold sorceress isn't a good fit for key farming, because the Countess is always cold immune, and all of Neelithuk's minions are always cold immune as well. But in fact, the cold sorceress can actually be very efficient at farming keys. So let's take a look at what I've got. I'm using a very traditional blizzard build here. Uh, maxed out blizzard, maxed out synergies, uh, appropriate number of points into cold mastery. In fact, I might even be just a little bit low here. Um, I've got some extra points into frozen orb due to some synergies for glacial spike and ice blast. Um, but it's just a pure cold build. For gear, there's nothing special. Um, it's a pretty um, uh, traditional loadout here. Um, you know, I've got a Shaco, I've got an Oculus, Viper Magi, nothing special, uh, nothing really with great rolls, uh, a normal Spirit Monarch, uh, we've got Mage Fist, but the biggest thing here is the faster cast rate. It's really important to hit those breakpoints. Uh, in this case, I'm shooting for uh, breaking the 105% faster cast rate breakpoint. Uh, that makes your teleporting so much faster. It's really great from a defensive perspective as well. You're gonna get hit a lot less as you're teleporting and you're gonna save a ton of time. It's really about efficiency when you're doing these farms. You'll see I've got decent magic find, but that's not what I'm gearing for. Magic find does not increase the drops of keys. The key drop rate is based purely on the number of players in the game. So my preference is to run more of a defensive build. But even with that strategy, you'll see I don't even have maxed out resistances. It doesn't take a lot of great gear to be a really good key farmer using your cold sorceress. Something that you will need for a key farm as a cold sorceress is a decent mercenary. Now for my merc, um, I'm just using a traditional uh, Nightmare Act 2 mercenary. Um, I've got a treachery. Um, this isn't even ethereal, it's just a, uh, a three socket, high defense armor. The most expensive rune is just a lem, so this is a pretty budget armor. For a weapon, I'm just using an insight. It's a regular insight. It's not ethereal. Obviously, ethereal would be better. It'd be higher damage, but really cheap rune word, which is both great damage, as well as you get the meditation aura, which gives you back a ton of mana, so you won't have to worry about mana pots when you're teleporting all over the place. Then we want to have a, a helm that's going to have life leech. Easiest one to do, Gravitel Rasha's Helm. Um, there's lots of other good options. This is a really budget build here, but the Merc is still solid. You're going to need the Mercenary to kill Cold Immunes, which most importantly for the Key Farm is going to be the Countess, who is always Cold Immune. All right, let's walk through the Key Farm. We're going to start here in Act 1, and we're going to farm the Countess. Uh, she can be found in the Black Marsh, and she is in the Forgotten Tower. So we just got to teleport around the Black Marsh, there we go, we found the tower pretty quickly. You gotta get down to cellar level five. Now the big trick here with the, the, the tower is that you're always gonna wanna turn left. So when you enter each level, you kind of turn shield side is the way that people like to refer to that. You wanna turn left from the exit of the tile that you come in on. So here I'm gonna turn shield side and go up this way. And you just teleport around until you find the next level. In this case, gotten really lucky so far with this map um, it's going really quick but you get those faster cast rate um, breakpoints and you're gonna you're gonna move really really quickly all right we're already to level five so I'm just gonna teleport right up into the countess she's cold immune remember so you let your merc go to business uh, keep an eye out for him um, and if he needs a pot give him a pot give yourself a pot and just let him work through all of these. So in this case, we didn't get a key, but great thing about the Countess, you're usually gonna get some low to mid-level rune. She can drop up to an Ist in kind of her bonus drop. That's still pretty rare, or up to a low with her regular monster drop. That's gonna be extremely rare, but it's gonna be very common. You're gonna get some decent runes, some things that you can upgrade or use for, for trading. You're gonna get your lems, you're gonna get your poles, you know, and then occasionally an um, mal, or ist. So let's move on to act two. So next we're gonna head over to act two and we're gonna go target the summoner. The summoner is in the arcane sanctuary. 
Um, there is no map trick here. You've got four directions. You just got to go until you find them. So teleport your way uh, through the arcane sanctuary till you find them. Um, a great hint here is when you get to these dead ends, um, I recommend you take a few seconds and you pop these chests. So these are these are super chests. They're gonna have um, some really great odds of, of, in a relative sense, dropping some decent gear, dropping some decent items, runes, things like that. Um, so you're gonna wanna carry around some keys to be able to unlock them. So in my opinion, it's worth popping those really quick on your way teleporting through. But let's get back out there. Um, given the, the really poor layout of Loot Golane, it is not worth um, using a town portal. Instead, just teleport yourself back to the start and move on to the next quadrant. Here we go. We got the summoner in our second second attempt. We'll kill him super quick. Nothing there. Uh, I like to come out here, grab this, and go right over to the waypoint. So I'm going to jump right over to Neelithuk. So Neelithuk is going to be in Act 5, Halls of Pain. Now, with Diablo 2 Resurrected, you can get that uh, waypoint safely without losing out on your portal to Pindle Skin. So when you get to the Halls of Pain, there's only three map layouts, and they are fixed. So there's only three patterns that you have to worry about. I'm going to show you all three layouts so that you know which direction to go. So when you come into this tile that kind of en uh, exits lower left, you teleport down, and then you kind of teleport and it's kind of almost directly right, and you'll end up here to the Halls of Vought. So here's the second map layout. In this situation, you're just gonna kinda teleport kinda, kinda bottom left, just kinda angle your way down here, and there is the Halls of Vought. And here's the third map layout. You've got this room that's got these four torches, and here you just teleport straight left. And there you go, Halls of Vought. When you do enter Halls of Vought, um, there are some indicators as to which direction Neilthuk's going to be. So you're going to want to look at a few specific tiles, so a few specific walls that if they have these kind of eyeball paintings on them, they'll tell you whether Neilthuk's in that direction. So here, uh, this is just a blank wall. There's nothing here, so it's not this lower left direction. If we come on over here, look, this is, this is what we're looking for. See these kind of creepy eye type looking things? That means Neilthuk is down in this bottom right section. Um, the other the other tiles that you want to look at are going to be this wall right here. This would indicate upper right. And then this wall right here would indicate upper left. Um, only one of them is going to have the eyeballs, and here it's, it's kind of the bottom right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teleport down. I'm going to be right next to Neelithuk. You know, you're used to seeing the corpse explosion on, on all of his minions, just kind of blowing people up. Um, it's really nasty, and that's where um, being a cold source is actually going to be to our benefit. So we're not going to be able to damage any of his minions, and so they're not going to die, so you can't blow them up. So I'm going to teleport down here right into this corner, and then I'm going to throw a blizzard right on top of Neelithuk. He'll die really quick, and you can see whether or not he dropped a key. He didn't drop a key this time, um, but we didn't kill any of his minions. We just kind of teleport around here. We're all safe. We can check it out. You know, if he did drop a key, you just jump in there, teleport in, grab the key, teleport out, and head back to town. And that's the key farm. It can be really fast, really efficient. You can do all three keys coming from Countess or Summoner or Neelithuk. You can work through all three of those bosses in just a few minutes and have a really efficient key farmer on your Cold Sorceress. If you haven't tried it already, I recommend giving it a shot. And let me know how it goes for you in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you in hell. Farewell.